As the Buddha tells it, wisdom begins with conviction. Not a generalized conviction, very specific. Conviction in his awakening, that what he awakened to was true, that the way he went about it could help him see truths like that, and that these truths are relevant for our lives. There's nothing unreasonable about these propositions. Faith or conviction in the Buddhist teachings doesn't mean believing in something in spite of the fact that it's not reasonable. These things are reasonable, but you can't prove them for yourself until you've actually acted on them. They're your working assumptions. Just like so many things we do in life, we can't really know for sure what the results are going to be, but we work on the assumptions. If we don't make the assumptions, we can't do the work, and if we don't do the work, we can't get the results. This is not the sort of teaching where people can say, well, I'm not going to believe anything until you prove it for me. You have to prove it for yourself, and you have to prove yourself in order to learn the truth of these things. When the Buddha talks about mundane right view, it connects directly to this. This is the right view that gets you started. The Buddha starts out by saying, there is what is given, there is what is sacrificed. What this means is that giving is a good thing. It's a valuable thing. And it actually happens. It may seem strange to have to assert that. But there were people in his time who actually said that giving didn't really happen. In other words, everything you did was predetermined by some outside force, so it wasn't really a gift if you gave something. You certainly weren't responsible for it, so there was no goodness inherent in it. Others have said that giving to other beings, other people, doesn't really accomplish anything because we all turn to dust at death. There's nothing left, so why bother being good to other people? So when the Buddha was saying, there is giving, he's asserting that your actions are not totally predetermined by the past. You do have freedom of choice. And the recipient's half worth. These are good things to believe. If the Buddha found that someone couldn't even take the proposition that giving was worthwhile, he didn't really want to teach them. There wasn't much more you could teach. That's why he began. He also began with the principle of gratitude, said it by saying that there is mother and there is father. Again, there were people who said that because your parents were totally predetermined in their actions, there's no particular virtue in the fact that they gave birth to you, that they taught you, that they fed you, that they looked after you. It was simply natural conditions forcing them to do these things. So there's no good. <clears throat> so they said there was no debt of gratitude. So again, the Buddha is asserting that your parents had freedom of choice. They could have abandoned you. They could have aborted you. But they didn't. You're alive because of them, because of choices they made and difficulties that they went through. And so gratitude is an appropriate response. So conviction begins with really basic things like this. And it's good to keep going back to the basics, to remind ourselves that there are so many things in life that we take for granted, but we don't really know for sure. And the Buddha is reminding us, okay, these are things you take on conviction, and these are worthwhile to take on conviction. From there he goes into the principle of that there are good and bad actions. Again, the fact that something is good or bad is not just a cultural oddity. It's built into the way things are, and that they have results. Again, this is something you can't prove at a time. 
but you will find that as you practice and you take it on faith, that if you act with skillful intentions, you're going to get good results. Unskillful intentions, you're going to get bad results. And these results last not only into this lifetime, but also into future ones. At the same time, we're reaping the harvest of some of our past bad actions and good actions. This is too something we, we take on faith. The people actually claim to be Buddhists, but they'll say, well, how could the Buddha have known these things? After all, we're just biological beings and all we know is this present lifetime. Of course, that's importing an idea from outside, defining us as, as to what we are, and then somehow as Buddhists we're supposed to ex accept that. But as the Buddha said, if you would define yourself, you limit yourself. His approach was not to say, well, this is what a human being is, and therefore this is what a human being can know. He explored in his own mind what a human being can know. And when he followed that to the ultimate happiness, then he came back and looked at the question as to what a human being is. And for the most part, he tended to put that question aside. His ideas of what you are, or what you are capable of doing can often get in the way. So what you need is simply the confidence that, yes, this is something you can do. Again, this is something you take on faith. Part of the Buddha's awakening was this description of the qualities of mind that he brought to the process, all of which are qualities that we all have to some extent. And saying if you take those qualities and you develop them to the nth degree, they will take you to something deathless. This is too something that has to be taken on faith. You can't know the deathless until you've actually experienced it through your own actions. As John Mahabha once said, if people who have reached nirvana could take it out and just show everybody, everybody would want that. Everything else in the world would, wouldn't sell. This would dominate the market, he said. But it's something that can't be seen unless you've done the work yourself. This is where conviction moves from mundane right view into transcendent right view, right view in terms of the Four Noble Truths. What the Buddha said about suffering is in many ways counterintuitive. Suffering is clinging, and clinging, the word for clinging in Pali Upadana can also mean taking sustenance, i.e. feeding. Now, For most of us, we get, get so much pleasure in our lives out of feeding emotionally and physically that the idea that this would be what suffering is goes against the grain. We can't imagine a happiness without feeding. He said, that's precisely the point. The only true happiness is one that doesn't have to feed. This again is something you take on faith, that the Buddha was able to know this and what he said was right. So faith, conviction, is a matter of trusting the Buddha, trusting his teachings. But as he also said, conviction gets carried over into your actions. If you simply assent to these things without acting on them, then he shows, he says, shows there's no real conviction. Because all of his teachings act as imperatives. The Four Noble Truths have their duties, even the basic truths on the mundane right view that skillful action should be developed and unskillful one should be abandoned. There's an imperative there. There's a duty. So if you really have conviction in these things, you follow through with them. So this is what it means to have faith in the Buddha. That he knew what he was talking about, he could know what he was talking about. And what he was talking about has a direct impact on what you should be doing with your life. After all, the practice is a long one, and it needs sustenance like this, because there will be times when you do something and you don't see the results for a long time. You have to have conviction that they will come. He has a nice image. He says, "Don't be, don't underestimate. <coughs> excuse me, don't underestimate merit. 
thinking that it won't come to you or won't amount to much. Just as a pot is filled with water, falling drip, drip by drip. And so away, little acts of merit, little acts of skillfulness, they accumulate, they build up. It takes a certain amount of faith to stick with it. Without the faith, you don't stick with it. You run into difficulties and you give up. So try to cultivate the sense of conviction that the Buddha knew what he was talking about and he could know what he was talking about. It has a direct impact on how you're going to find happiness in your life. You can't have the practice without faith. Just simply remember, it's not an unreasonable faith. It's simply things you can't know for sure until you've tried them. And the things that the Buddha has you believe are all things that are good, starting with generosity, goodwill, gratitude, things we've already sensed to have a certain goodness to them. And the Buddha confirms that, but he says it goes further than you might think. These are good propositions, and they're worth taking. It's worth taking them on. Because you look at what life is without them. When you have faith in these things, there's hope. Without them, the world is a pretty hopeless place. So give them a try. <laughs>